Now for my not so favorite. This is like on my top hated drugs actually. Phenobarbital. And yet we focus so much. Kind of weird. We focus so much time on barbiturates. But in the Philippines, we only have two barbiturates. Number one, phenobarbital. Number two, theopental. Theopental is not used in sedation. It is not used. Sorry, it is not used in insomnia. It is not used in epilepsy. It is used in anesthesia. Or it's used in anest anesthetics. And the phenobarbital is used mainly in epilepsy. So those are the only two you actually have to study. All the rest you study is trivia. It is useless trivia for the Philippine context. But anyway, phenobarbital is still used kasi. So I still have to talk about it. But honestly, it should not be used that much, really. So phenobarbital was like one of the first. Um, before, phenobarbital actually has a predecessor. Its predecessor is potassium bromide. That's how ancient we're talking about. So like before phenobarbital, we only had potassium bromide and the phenobarbital came in. Okay, So phenobarbital... It's GABA, GABAergic. But unlike benzos, here's here's something I came up with on the spot, like literally um, 15 minutes ago. I came up with this 15 minutes ago. If you want to remember the difference between how phenobarbital and benzos work on the GABA receptor, here's how. Phenobarbital, yung tal, tagal. It, pinapatagal niya yung pagbukas ng GABA receptor. Because the GABA receptor, the GABA A, Receptor, it has five subunits. They form a chloride ion channel, right? What phenobarbital does is it just goes inside. It goes deep inside your GABA A receptor, the ion channel, and pinapatagal. So tal stands for tagal. Pinapatagal niya yung pagbubukas ng chloride ion channel. So chloride goes in, depresses the CNS, um, the, um, and yeah, CNS depression and all of that. So that's how. Because benzo. Benzo, B stands for big. Benzo makes the chloride ion channel bigger. Okay, and benzo, big. Phenobarbital, tagal. Okay. Um, what's the problem with um, this difference in MOA? Apparently, what this translates to is phenobarbital is actually more toxic. When you talk about therapeutic index, therapeutic window, must narrow. Must narrow yung sa phenobarbital. It's a lot more narrow compared to um, benzos. Another thing is, the cognitive dysfunction in phenobarbital is so much worse. It is so much worse. So much worse. Plus, of course, the addiction dependence risk. So, given all of those factors, if you can use a benzo, use a benzo. Right? Phenobarbital does have a niche, to be fair. It has about two to three niches. Okay, the first niche is um, febrile seizures. Phenobarbital is still first line in neonatal febrile seizures. Okay, we can't take that away. That's what the current recommendations are. Fine. Fair. That's fair. Number two, for the previous generation who did not have that many anti-epileptic drugs to choose from, so they were on phenobarbital, pero hindi na discontinue and medyo delicado i discontinue, so kailangan i continue kahit kahit pangit ng phenobarb kasi mas delikadong i-try stop It's a lot more dangerous to try to stop it for those who have been on it for like decades already. So that's number two. Number three is in status epilepticus, if, if the benzos fail, the levetiracetam fails, the phenytoin fails, phenobarb is an option. Pari din, refractor, re refractory status epilepticus. But otherwise, just please don't use it, okay? I know the 14th edition of Catzone still says you can use barbiturate for insomnia. Please lang. Wag! Just go. Wag! Okay? Wag. What happens when you start worshipping the textbook as if it were gospel truth and you start giving barbiturates for difficulty sleeping? You thought ketiapine for insomnia was bad? Think about phenobarbital for insomnia. That's even worse. That's just one step away from alcohol for insomnia. Just don't. Okay? Don't. Right? So, comparing it to all of the... You have so many safer options. Okay? Even benzos. And I, I don't like benzos, but I would take benzos over phenobarb any day. Right? And now, the final argument. Eh, ang, ang mura. Jarvin, ang mura. Right? Like, less than 10 pesos ata per pill. Why not? Well, why not? First of all, phenobarbital is a controlled drug. You need an S2 license. The schedule, you need an S2 license to prescribe it, which is 
tama, tama behavior. Okay, you do not just give this drug willy nilly because again, narrow therapeutic index, really bad cognitive dysfunction, and um, addiction dependence, and all of that. Okay. Number two, because you need an S2 license to prescribe it, you need to find a doctor with an S2 license. And you know, maintaining, renewing your S2 license, it takes money. So where will that money come from? From the professional fees. They will charge. The doctors will charge, well, rightfully so, because doctors need to eat, right? They will charge for, as part of their professional fees, part of it will go to renewing their S2 license. So mas mahal maghanap ng doktor na may S2 license para prescribe. So you think unit cost, yeah, mas mura, but when you add the cost of finding a doctor with an S2 license versus, you know, even technically non-specialized physicians should be able to manage un uncomplicated epilepsy cases based on the uh, MAPM8 guidelines, right? Then it's clear. Phenobarbital is generally not worth it for just because it's cheaper, okay? So again, there are just those niches that you would um, see it. But outside that, just please stay away from the drug, okay? Just stay away from the drug.